Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tom and today I'm at Marrier's Flea Market in Palmer, Mass, just down the road from Brimfield. And as always, I'm on the search for stuff that I really don't need but just have to have. So let's see what I can find. Here's a pretty nice selection of big little books. These ones are mostly from the 1930s and they're asking 12 each or two for 20, which seems to be roughly what they go for you know, give or take. I've seen some of them go for more on eBay, some less. Uh, but we've got SOS, The Young Detective, Smiling Jack. I really don't recognize any of these names. Uh, if any of you out there recognize these, let me know in the comments. Uh, but then we've got Danger Trails and Captain Easy. It's kind of an unusual name. And I think these are kind of neat. They also have inscriptions on the uh, title page which I think were from when they were originally purchased. Now, I'm usually not super interested in typewriters, unless they say IBM on them, like this one here. This is an IBM Model D typewriter from, I believe, 1967 is when it was first produced, and I imagine it went into the 70s. So I'm not exactly sure when this one was built. Um, but they go for a bit of money. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of them selling on eBay, but the ones I have seen usually go for over $200. And they came in two variants. There was the regular version, which this is, and then they also had an executive version. Hi, how much is the uh, IBM typewriter? 65. 65? Okay. Assuming it works, 65 is a really good deal. A common model. Yeah, I've never seen one before. I got a Remington Noiseless. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. For some reason, I did not end up buying this, and looking back, I really wish I had. Here's a couple of wax boxes of Robin Hood Prince of Thieves trading cards by Topps from 1991. He has them priced at $7 a box, which is a pretty good deal. I would have bought them if it weren't for that black mark across them. Those, I believe, were marks to indicate that they were being returned to Tops by the original dealer, and then somehow they ended up back on the secondary market. I don't like them like that because they look defaced to me. It looks like, you know, somebody drew on them, so I usually will pass on those unless they're really valuable, and I'm getting a really good deal. And don't forget, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. I've got a lot more flea market videos coming up. Thanks. This is a mask switchblade helicopter from 1985. This one is incomplete, though. It's missing the wings. I think if it were complete, it would probably go for like $60 to $100. But in that condition, I don't know, maybe $20? And here's my first buy of the day. This is a Logitech Wingman Extreme Joystick from about the mid to late 90s. Uh, I have a vintage computer, and I've been wanting one of these for years, honestly. $5? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take this for 5 bucks. Can you hold this for a second? Can't argue with $5. They seem to sell for about 15 to 20 online. I thought this was pretty cool. This is an old children's book from 1943 called Jojo by Marjorie Barrows. And the thing that interested me the most was the cover, the way it's got that hole there, and then basically this, because it's a koala bear, uh, the koala bear appears throughout the entire book. It's kind of neat. They usually sell for only about 10 bucks, so they're not particularly valuable, but pretty cool. Here's something I'm pretty sure I've never seen before, a Volvo branded ashtray. And it's for a F613 truck, which I've never heard of before. I like this little glass tank model here. It looks like it's probably based on some sort of World War II era tank. I don't recognize the model though. Holster for, for is it a um, slide, like rule. A slide rule? Yeah, I hated those things. Yeah. Magnus 
Yeah. So cute. Something I've been considering buying for a long time is an antique brass fire extinguisher like this one, but they've always been too expensive. I usually see them going for well over $100. This one's a lot less than that, and it's not in the best condition, but I'm yeah. pretty sure it'll clean up nicely if I get the right cleaning products. There's 60 on it. Hi. You have uh, 60 on the fire extinguisher? Would you take 50? Yeah. 60 on it? What would you like? 50? 50? Yeah, go ahead. Alright, sounds good. This Fisher Price truck caught my eye just because it's so 1970s with that mural on the side there. It's not in the best condition though, um, but he's only asking 10 bucks, so that's not a bad price, I don't think. Here's some uranium glass, and they're only asking five each, which is a very good deal, I think. So, like the frosty root beer in my last Brimfield video, here's another soda I've never heard of before. This is Double Cola. Very unusual bottle. Only five bucks, sounds like a good deal, but um, yeah, never heard of that before. Here's a whole bunch more uh, uranium glass, and it's all relatively well priced, I think. Looks like between roughly five to twenty dollars a piece. Now, I'm honestly not sure if they still use these in classrooms today, but back in the 80s, these magic markers were in every classroom. And if you're like me, you can probably still remember what they smell like. That was the best part of them, the smell. So this lunchbox is a Wee Pals Kid Power. Never heard of that before. It looks very 1970s though. Maybe late 60s? Three things that I'm interested in are Sears, computers, and vintage toys. And this is all three. This is a talking Computron from 1986. Still in the box, obviously. The box is in rough condition. But even loose, these seem to sell for about $30 or more on eBay. And with the box, it's probably worth at least $40. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. One thing you always want to check on old toys like this that had batteries is to see if the batteries were left in it and if they burst. Because a lot of times the batteries will burst and then they'll leak over everything and destroy it. Now this one does have the batteries in it, which is not good, but luckily they hadn't leaked. And it works, amazingly. Yeah. He was only asking five bucks for it, so based on that it's working, it's five bucks, couldn't pass it up, had to buy it. Yeah, I'll take it for five bucks. Why not? This salmon colored thing in the center of the table is a panorama slide projector. I think probably from the 60s, that's my guess. And he's got this one here on the table. And then just around the corner, he's got the same model in the original box, which is pretty cool. 
I actually have quite a few slide projectors like this or similar to this at home, but um, I've got too many of them, and most of them don't work. So I'm kind of holding off on buying any more for now. And you can find these pretty often at Goodwill. Like every time I go to Goodwill, there's at least one or two old slide projectors like this for sale. This is a Coleco Super Smurf kids bike from about 82 or 83. And in very good condition, these can go for quite a bit of money. I've seen them selling for like over a hundred dollars. Five? Okay, thanks. So yeah, that's an example of uh, I didn't buy it for who knows what reason. Uh, Five dollars is a great deal. It is definitely rough with the paint flaking off like that, but it's still worth way more than five dollars. Who else here remembers Miami Mice from the 1980s? Apparently this was a Sesame Street skit, but um, I always associated it with my local radio station KISS 95.7, where I guess maybe they were doing a parody of the Sesame Street skit? This is something I've definitely never seen before. This is Mickey Mouse themed boot polish or shoe polish called Scuffy. Boot, boot polish oh. for kids shoes with uh, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. If I were to guess, I would say it's probably from the <laughs> 50s. These albums are horrible. You can't get anything out of them. They, this is what mine look like. Yep. Some of them would pop out, others are just like right. they're not coming out. You know, this is where I, 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 I scan to try to find the bird. Look at the wrong way to the bird. Oh, this is Disney World. Parts of the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. Chicken of the Sea. Yeah, they used to, way back when, this might be Disneyland actually, they used to have a Chicken of the Sea themed. <laughs> boat where they sold like tuna fish sandwiches actually. Oh you're kidding. And that's the chicken of the sea. Yeah yeah. That's a caravan. Yeah this looks like yes this is definitely Disneyland. Because that's not what parts no. of Caribbean looks like in Orlando. These pewter spaceships here in the center are all uh, Franklin Mint Star Trek ships from like the late 80s, early 90s to mid 90s. And I've actually got all of these. I started getting these back when they came out. I would get one for Christmas or my birthday. And if I didn't already own all these, I would have bought these because that's a pretty good price, 40 to 80 each. Um, 80 might be a bit high, but 40 is very good. So that's cool. I've never actually seen those uh, for sale before, honestly, outside of eBay. And of course we've got some of those 1973 Pepsi Looney Tunes glasses. Uh, I've said it before, but I've got all of these except for two. I'm still missing the Henry Hawk glass and the Slowpoke glass. The Slowpoke one tends to go for over $100 on eBay, so I don't know when I'm going to actually pick that one up. This ET is actually a toy box from 1982. They've got $750 on it which I honestly don't know what these go for, but that does sound high to me, or at least that's way more than I'd ever consider paying for it. It's definitely neat though.
Now you see that rocket there, that gray one to the right? I don't know if that is the same rocket that I see at every flea market or if there's just lots of them out there because I swear I see that same rocket at almost every flea market I've been to. And you'll probably see it in a lot of my flea market videos. This is pretty cool. This is a Play-Doh Star Wars action set from 1977 when the first movie came out. And this one seems to be in pretty good condition. The prices on this one, though, vary wildly. I've seen them as low as about $30 plus shipping up to over $100 plus shipping. But I'm honestly not sure if this is complete or not. It's kind of hard to tell. I'd have to get a, like a full list of the original contents to be sure. This is a joystick for a Commodore 64, and a uh, little known fact, or at least little known to some people, the uh, Commodore 64 joysticks are 100% compatible with Atari 2600 joysticks. Believe it or not, I had a Commodore 64 when I was a kid, and we always used the Atari joysticks on it. Nowadays, you can't do that. There's no uh, inter-compatibility between different game systems, as far as I know. Old joystick from an Atari, but it's still in the original box. Here's another piece of Sears memorabilia. This is a reproduction of the 1900 Sears catalog, and I think this came out in probably the late 80s, maybe, because I remember having this back in the 80s. Uh, and it's really cool. It's much smaller than the original one would have been. But the stuff in here is so weird, like they had such a wide range of things that you would never see in a catalog today. Like headstones? I mean, that's just crazy. It's so, it's so fun to look through it and just so weird as well. These headstones range from about $9 to a super expensive $14. Good stuff. It's a matchbox car. Oh. Good luck today. Thanks. Happy hunting. All right. If I, bring it, if I find it, show me what you find, right? Stuff. Yeah, pretty much anything actually. <laughs> yeah, I have loads of it, but this isn't the place to. I can't bring it up here because it really gets destroyed. Oh yeah. It's not the ideal conditions for it. No, especially with all this yeah, this humidity. Yeah. I, it's I, crazy. Like I said I have, I have totes and totes of it. I always keep it. Cause I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Um, one of these days I'll figure it out. And yeah. You just have to. Uh, you have to be gentle with it and everything else. And, you know, these conditions aren't... Uh, aren't yeah, good. heat, humidity, and sunlight are not good for paper. <laughs> and, the, and the occasional rainstorm in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, Viewmasters. Mm -hmm. 
And there you have it. That's the end of part one of the 2023 Marriers Flea Market. We're going to have one more part to this, so stay tuned for that. If you like this video, though, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. I've got a lot more flea market videos coming up, as well as mall videos and store walkthroughs. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.